Well, um, welcome to Monday Motivations. Uh, this is a weekly video that we're going to be putting together to talk about um, this little book that I wrote, um, 52 Weeks to a More Purposeful You. So it's Monday Motivations, 52 Weeks to a More Purposeful You. And every week I'm going to have a new guest on the show to talk about one of the topics. I am so thrilled to have today to have Kristen Bennett as our guest. Kristen Bennett is a self-proclaimed disruptor who enjoys challenging common thinking to create an uncommon future. She works with organizations and individuals to create and sustain transformational change that improves the quality of life for people in the workplace and beyond. As someone who received, received conflicting messages about what it means to be a leader early in her career, Kristen believes that her super strength is helping people let go of the limiting beliefs that hold them back to reveal the possibilities available to them in their current reality. She uses humor and her love of people to consistently call people to greatness and works with them while they discover ways to activate their natural strengths. I can attest Kristen Bennett is a, I would say a truth bomb, a thought provoker, inspirer, and you truly do call people forth. You call me forth all the time. So I'm thrilled to have you on our show this week. And we're going to be talking about exactly what um, your bio talked about is beliefs. So you read the chapter on beliefs. Let's see, it's on page 23. Yes, I have it here too. Yep. And uh, so what, what did you think? What, um, you know, what did you get out of it? Um, what did you find helpful? Maybe what did you disagree with? I don't know that I necessarily disagreed with anything. I was very excited for this topic, first of all, because um, if I look back on my life, not just at work, but in my own personal life, I think that beliefs have played a huge part in both the things that have pushed me forward, but also in the things that have held me back that I haven't even realized. So when I started to read um, this particular Monday motivation, um, I, I was really inspired. I especially like the quote that's in the beginning from Orson Scott Card, which is, this is how humans are. We question all of our beliefs, except for the ones we really believe and those we never think to question. Uh, so this for me resonated in a lot of different areas, right? Like if we think about what's been happening in the world socially uh, in the last, I don't know, what do we call it? 18 months and, and people's beliefs and how that's impacting the world. If we think about in our relationships, whether they're friendships, family, or romantic, the beliefs that we have that, um, you know, can cause us to, to be really successful and feel fulfilled and the ones that keep us feeling lonely and isolated. And also at work, the, the beliefs that we hold that keep us unsuccessful and those that make us even more effective. Like there's just so many ways that we could go with this topic. And so I, I was really inspired. Yeah, I mean, and I think one of the things that I like about the quote is it is this truth bomb that we never think to question the ones that we really believe. And like when we believe something, there is a, a devotion and a loyalty to that belief that um, sadly compromises logic. Right. Some could say common sense. And, and I think that we judge other people when they're limited in their beliefs and we don't see their belief. We're, we're like, how could you think this way? But we do the same thing. Right. Yeah, a hundred percent. It reminds me of that, that movie that you told me about that shooter movie. Yeah. And that quote comes from it, right? Like when you question, I, I, I can't remember it verbatim, but, but I think it's true so much so that even if it's a damaging belief, sometimes we will go out and seek out other information that confirms what we believe to be true, even though it's, it's hurting us and it's not a belief that is serving us well. And 
if I had to take my best guess, I'm no, you know, neuroscientist or anything like that, but if I had to take my best guess, I would say that that comes from the need for our brain to want to keep us safe, right? And like when we have something that we hold as true and we start to question it, that kind of rocks our world a little bit. That doesn't feel so safe. So sometimes even if it's damaging us, it might feel safer to hold on to something that's icky. 100%. So the quote in the movie is, people don't know what to do when their belief system collapses. So it's like, when we think about it, if I believe something and I build my reality on that foundational belief, like we're terrified to let that belief go. And like you said, we're gonna go look for ways to reinforce it. And I see this all the time in the workplace with people that I coach. I mean, I just recently, I have someone who literally believes that his or her boss is out to get him or her. Like like my boss is trying to shove me out. My boss is trying to, and. And it's like, okay, that is, if, if that belief is held as truth, that's why they sent the email. And that's why, right. they, and we don't question those beliefs because if we did, then we would have to process the repercussions of a different reality. Right. And that's, that's rough. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. I think the first time that I started to question this for myself, I, I think back to when I feel like I had my first big girl job and that's actually where I met you. Um, so I, I have almost all of my life worked in the public sector in some capacity. And I don't believe that there is any greater job that you could do than to help people. And so when I had an opportunity to go in and, and be able to help families that, you know, were experiencing some of their most vulnerable times in their lives, I saw that as a huge, huge honor. I took it very, very seriously. And uh, I remember very distinctly, like taking pride in my work and wanting to, you know, do it the quickest because when at the end of the day, in that line of work, when you leave, if you have stacks of paper on your desk, it's not just something that's going to be there tomorrow. It represents, you know, diapers for somebody's baby or food or rent money, like big, big deal, right? And so I approached that with the belief of if I can just give it my all, then it's going to have like a good result, a good impact for families, what I didn't realize is that what was also kind of creeping in was uh, a little bit of competition, a little bit of judgment of other people who weren't, from my perception, doing the same sort of thing, who, uh, you know, just had other focuses. And again, all from my own perception, my own vantage point, not even necessarily truth to it. And so I believed that I was coming to work every day to show up to give the best that I can, but how it was being experienced was very, very different. Um, and I received some feedback, which was a little bit about what was included in my bio. And, and people, I, I was told by top leaders who, you know, had a real stake in the trajectory of my career in this place that you're being perceived as someone who is mean you're judgmental, this is not helpful, this is not effective, which rocked my belief system because in my mind, I'm like, this is what you have to do to like get the good results, to give the people the stuff, right? To give them what they need so that they um, can do better for their families. Nobody wants to ask for help. Nobody feels comfortable asking for help. And so if I can just be this person, it's gonna have a great impact. And so when I got feedback like that, that what I was actually doing was being perceived as harmful and not helpful, that shook me because I, I believed completely the opposite. And the result of that was it shut me down. It shut me down. I didn't want to participate in the same way. I didn't show up with the same sort of energy and excitement for the people that I was serving, you know, where one week, I would have been very happy to stay late and help a family that came in on the last minute 
now, if somebody's calling my phone at 4.59 on a Friday, I'm like, listen, you knew you had these issues in the morning. Why are you calling? Like, attitude, just, just yuck, just shut, shut me down. And I blamed, I blamed that behavior on the feedback for a really long time. And through a lot of self-reflection, I've realized that I was thinking about it the wrong way and I needed to like flip the belief. Mm-hmm. The feedback was actually a gift. And what was being highlighted for me were behaviors that were ineffective. So it's like your heart's in the right place, but how it's being experienced is problematic. And so with that, you can either choose to be offended and stuck and resentful and all of these things that really just don't feel good to hold on to, or you can take the pieces of the feedback that are useful and kind of like compare them with your beliefs and what, who you intend to be, and then decide on a path forward that gets you closer to the results and the impact that you're actually after. And so for me, thinking of beliefs in that way has been transformational. Yeah. What, um, and I love this story that, like we can go down so many different cul-de-sacs with it. Um, but I love it because I think what you described was when reality collided with your perspective or your belief, what, what was the belief that you were holding at first when you first got that feedback, or maybe there were a few, I think there were a few. I felt really, really judged, um, which made me feel defensive, right? I believed that um, people had it out for me. I, what I realized was, I don't know if it was more of a belief or or what I like to say is a story that I was telling myself Mm -hmm. about the feedback, right? That, you know, you don't really know me. You obviously have bad intentions. You're a loser of a leader, you don't know what you're talking, just all of this stuff that um, helped me to procrastinate and avoid doing the self-reflection that needed to happen in order for me to grow. Yeah. The longer that I delayed that and held on to the belief of, no, you're absolutely perfect and everybody else is wrong. Like they're misunderstanding you. Yes. And so, so, you know, through the journey, I've realized that it is up to all of us to manage not just our intent, mm-hmm. but also our impact, and that we can do ourselves a great, great favor by just like considering, like challenging the yeah. beliefs we have, and also challenging um, the the information and feedback that we receive from others. Right? There are nuggets, there are gems of truth in in everything. And so rather than taking it as something to be offended by, like what, what can I learn from this or what adjustments can I make so that my impact more closely matches who I intend to be? Yeah. Well, um, this, this story couldn't be more, more effective, um, because you just painted a picture for us of how beliefs play out. So a belief, and I think I wrote it in here, um, a belief is a story we hold as true, whether we're aware of it or not. So a belief, it's it's something that our brains and our bodies experience it as irrefutable truth. Right. This is an irrefutable truth. I am helping these families, or it's an irrefutable truth that I was being kind And a lot of times we're holding opinions as irrefutable truths, and those are our beliefs. And then when somebody else doesn't hold that same belief or truth or perspective and and reality collides together, you just articulated the process that we can all go through to constantly be maturing and, and growing. And we can allow, when our belief systems bump up with reality, we can allow it to kind of edit what we believe. And and I think going through the last 18 months or the last two years, 
I mean, how many things could we go to collectively as a people, right? But all of those changes and and it, in uncertainties, it, it caused a lot of us to have to look at our foundational beliefs. And for some people, all they did was become, and all they're doing now is becoming more rigid. And, and I want to say that's okay, because that's part of the process. Because in the beginning, when you got that feedback, kind of like the first stage when our belief system is potentially collapsing is it's the rigidity. It's the black and white thinking. It's like, right. but, but then the more you struggle with that, you made a choice to get curious. Right. What, what, what did you call it? A nugget of truth or a nugget like of a gem truth. of truth or a, a nugget gem of, truth. of truth. Yeah. What gem mm -hmm. of truth might be in there? So, um, so yeah, so, so you gave a great example of how you've experienced it working in your life. What, what advice on this topic of beliefs, what advice would you give to yourself going forward, you know, being on the planet as a human, needing to interact with others, striving for the pursuit of happiness? Like, what advice would you give yourself about this topic of beliefs? I think that I think that the the truth is that there is so much power in our beliefs and the power can be used for either good or or bad things, right? Our beliefs can limit us, right? They can keep us stuck and experiencing results that are unfulfilling to us, but they can also liberate us if if we can use um, our beliefs to our benefit and also separate our beliefs or like our story from what reality is and then decide how to move forward. And I think that part of why, I, I'll just speak for myself, I think that part of why it was so difficult for me to have my beliefs of who I am challenged is because it felt like a loss of power in some way hearing feedback about my approach that was negative when I know that I intended to be some somebody who was being helpful and positive. Um, I felt like somebody else telling my story for me took my power away. Mm. It's the beauty of beliefs, right? Like you can choose to decide what information somebody else is giving to you, or you can decide how you want to look at a situation and look at just like what's true. And then where you get to take your power back is say, given what is true and given what is the reality, what's the very next step that I can take that's going to get me closer to who I intend to be or closer to the impact that I'm hoping to have. And then just, just go do that. Like it cuts down on so much of the drama and it cuts down on so much of um, the heartache mm -hmm. that we experience and, and it can really be empowering. So I guess my best advice would just be, you know, choose only the beliefs that, that liberate you and then decide what you want to do next to get closer to the you that you intend to be. Mm, I love that. And, and I'll piggyback on that. My, my advice to myself, and I try not to give advice to other people because we're all <laughs> grown up. Um, but, but I think that to be, because you said the advice was choose the beliefs, right? Like yeah, choose. choose the beliefs and, that liberate you, not the yeah. ones that hurt you and tear you down. Yeah, which is what you do with your coaching clients. You said, you know, um, you work with clients to help them liberate their limiting beliefs and liberate themselves to step into their full potential. So, um, and it's cool because uh, the tagline of, of my coaching firm is you always have a choice. And, and a lot of times we feel overpowered. We feel that we, we don't have a choice, but we always have a choice. Even if we can't change our circumstance, or a situation, a death of a loved one, a, you know, there are things in life that are irrevocable that we can't change, but we can choose how we think about it. And we can right. choose 
who we want to be after having suffered that or endured that. And so um, I think to piggyback on what you're saying of choose liberating beliefs is I would say, number one, let's start by raising consciousness to what are the beliefs that I'm holding in the first place. And, and I love journaling. That's why in the book, um, so in the book, there's one short message to read every week, and then there's a spot for journaling. And, and I, actually in the last couple of days, I, I've had sometimes journaling for me is like my dreams and visions and my gratitude. And then other times it's like a negativity unraveling. Like, let me, let me unwind the thoughts that are unconsciously swirling and creating this negative perception and probably fueling negative beliefs. So I think starting by taking captive our thoughts specifically for most through writing right. and, and just writing them down and, and because we're not our beliefs, you know, if we separate ourselves from the thoughts that we're having, then we can choose, do I want to keep thinking like this or do I want to think differently? Yeah, I, th I think that's so true. And I think that for the, for most of us, you know, when something happens, we're kind of hardwired to like our, our brain starts narrating things to the negative, right? And then that's when things mushroom into these catastrophic things. But to your point, and that's why I love how you designed this book is it gives people an opportunity just to kind of check in with themselves like, okay, so here's this great information and I read it. And what's true for me about this? And let's just see. And sometimes just putting the pen to paper, you don't even know what's going to come out. And um, so it's, it's a really great tool. And I'm sure your coaching clients have benefited greatly from this as a resource. So I, I agree. I, I would say that too. Just, you know, check your story, check your story and don't believe everything you think. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. can't believe myself all the time. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. unless it's great. Yeah. Unless it's great. I don't believe it all. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time it is, right? <laughs> right. right. Uh, well, thank you so much. So um, this is Kristen Bennett. We spoke about uh, beliefs from the book, Monday Motivations, 52 Weeks to a More Purposeful You. And Kristen is currently growing a coaching practice. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So yes. you, you tend to draw clients, as I understand it, are um, people who are ready for change, like people who are ready to explore and be challenged and, um, and, and just go to that next level. And I can just attest that, that anybody who's interested in coaching do, and now I don't think, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but do you do sample sessions, like a one complimentary Yes. So I, for, I've, for our viewers, <laughs> for sure, for sure. I recently started doing that and I think that it's so helpful. So I'm working with a couple people right now who just want to be more fulfilled in their personal life. But I also have a passion for working with um, emerging leaders. So either people who want to be promoted into a leadership role by, I say by title, right? Because we can all be leaders regardless of our title. Um, and the sweet spot for me is really new supervisors and managers, because I think that there's a lot of um, very limiting beliefs and ideas about what it means to be a leader that some of us have inherited, that leaders are finding right now, they really don't work in a 21st yeah. century place. And so helping people carve out, you know, who do you want to be? And what is your leadership legacy going to be on the, the spaces that you occupy is something that I'm finding a lot of um, fulfillment in. Well, I know that you're going to help people like prevent or minimize the amount of heartache or the bumps and the bruises of first taking on that leadership role. So thank you. So. so, and you can be reached at Kristen Bennett at yahoo.com actually it's kristen bennett 44 at yahoo.com and um that's k-r-i-s-t-e-n-b-e-n-n-e-t-t-4-4 at yahoo.com i'm sure there's going to be a way to post it for people to read so 
Um, right. Thank you so much. And we will keep moving on with our Monday motivations once a week. Thank you, Corey. And I just want to acknowledge you too for doing this. I think that there's a lot of people who are going to benefit from the great uh, wisdom that you've provided in keeping people motivated and, and inspired and encouraged. So thank you too for doing this. Thank you. Mm -hmm.